uh, it's not the department of science and society. I mean, I'm a historian of science, so I started with the old things, basically. Uh, but it is called technology and society, and that and technology is something where you have enormous social, political, economic, and cultural influences. And I always say you don't have that on gravity. Gravity doesn't care at what kind of political system or so, right? So this is a very, very different thing. And that, that whole complex of the applied sciences driven by engineering is now gaining importance. And it is an interesting, and, and, and I would say serendipitous, I mean, a lucky thing that the Department of Technology and Society is, which has a social science component, right? can be economics, can be anthropology, can be political science, can be all sorts of things, in an engineering department. So it's not outside in the College of Arts and Science, in a, in a different college. Now, inside where the most radical changes occur, and our department has resolved, I mean, we had a year to think about that, we always looked at education, we always looked at education in the engineering context, so it was always engineering education, and now it's STEM education, uh, for it. uh, but when the department started in 1976, quite a long time ago, uh, the idea was to inform the outside world what engineering is doing, what engineers are doing. And that is also has a societal component because 1976 is still relatively short after 1968. In 1968, the students were very rebellious and wanted change in society. Many Western students, my country in Germany, in the United States, and so on and so forth. So there were students that wanted to change the world. And the students that wanted to change the world then went into, when they studied, they went into sociology because they thought sociology is the study of society, we want to change society, so we have to study sociology. And there were some people that said it would be actually very good if especially also minority students in America, let's say African American students or so, would study engineering because there they can make a real impact mm -hmm. and, and so on and so forth. So, so this was the idea to tell students that made that decided to major or doctorate in sociology or English or something like that, that they should perhaps also think about engineering. And now we have a completely different situation. So the arrow went from engineering to society. Now this arrow is turning around and society is pointing to engineering. And society is asking questions. What are you doing? Is this environmentally sound? Is this ethically uh, acceptable? And so on and so forth. So now, the world doesn't have to be informed about engineering because the world knows that the cell phones and all that stuff, is, everybody's hooked to it. But now, the world wants also to tell engineering, now you are developing artificial intelligence. We want you to develop ethical artificial intelligence something like that. So, so that's, an, and we resolved now in our department to stay with education, but call it smart education and take up such questions. We have also uh, always had uh, research in development, so we called it smart development. We want to look at uh, how can you make development not only the old way that you give aid and money and new technologies and so on, but that you also study why is it so often that it ends when the well is drilled or the, uh, the electrical generator is, is built? Why are the people, let's say it's Sub-Saharan Africa, so the communities also, it would be much better if they would adopt and start a, a factory or start something on their own. So not only waiting till it comes, but going further and 
they're making it their own thing. So that's what we a little bit think this smart development should also look. Then we have some faculty that study the built environment, buildings, urbanization.